Merry Christmas everyone, hope you all having great holidays. This is part 6 of what if Naruto became the Vasto Lorde. This is the last part of this what if. Hope you guys enjoyed this what if series. If you guys enjoyed this what if, comment down below and let me know. Check out my new videos of my Hero Academia what ifs in my second channel, and give it some love as well. Link is in the description. And go ahead, and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. I fear for your safety, said Conan, as she stared at Payne, and saw him looking back with uncaring eyes that at one point, had been filled with emotion-filled life. The fear is noted, said Payne while ignoring the look Conan was giving him. And you are ignoring it, said Conan calmly. Okriora Schiffer cannot kill me Conan. Itachi, Kasame, and the others may have fallen. But I won't, said Payne simply. What about me? Said Conan seeing him look at her for a second. What about you? Said Payne turning and seeing Conan stiffen as if struck before turning away to leave. You hurt her feelings, said Madara appearing suddenly thanks to his size. Should I care? Said Payne before turning to face Smother. No? Though I am a bit surprised that you don't considering the history between the two of you have together, said Madara seeing Payne's eyes narrow. That was a different person. A different man in a different life fold together. Conan is just a member of this organization and serves her purpose well. Whether she lives after this season ends is not my concern. Why she thinks it would be I don't know, and I don't care, said Payne walking away from Madara. She won't. I'll make sure of that, thought Madara knowing that when this was over, all the other members of the Akatsuki were dead, and Ichiha was the ruler of the entire world. As it was always meant to be. With Conan, Conan had collapsed onto the ground the moment she entered her private chambers, shut the door, and cried for the first time in many years since the death of Yahiko after being betrayed by Hanzo. The Gato had become pain after that, using the Rinnegan to become the god that he was now, and taking control of Ame from Hanzo to become his new ruler. Only now he's become the very thing we fought against thought Conan sadly knowing that everything they were doing now was hypocritical, and Yuya Hiko would frown upon them for falling this far. The sadness is pathetic, said Okriora appearing in front of Conan via Garganta. Come to glow before killing me. You wouldn't be the first to try, said Conan glaring at the iron car before her. I don't gloat. I wouldn't know how, said Okriora, as he walked towards the woman until she was within arm's reach, and saw the defiant look in her eyes. You're going to kill me no matter what I do. All I can do now is strike first and go down fighting, said Conan, as she turned her hand into a razor sharp sword, and stabbed it at Okriora's body with the tip of the weapon hitting the man's pale torso, and doing nothing to hurt him. I have been watching you for some time now Conan. In fact, I have been watching all of the remaining Akatsuki members, and found that out of all of them, you are the only one that deserves mercy, said Okriora, who wasn't even intimidated by her weapon, and simply knocked it away with the paper flying everywhere while her hand returned to normal. I don't want any of your mercy or your pity. Kill me. Kill me and be done with it, said Conan, as her eyes now close, and awaited for the strike from the former Espada, that would cut her down to pieces. You would turn down an offer to join me and leave for Kumo. Or miss. Why? Said Okriora seeing the woman just glare at him. Because despite everything that has happened, I joined this organization out of love for someone precious to me, and if I left now, it would insulting to his spirit, said Conan, as she saw Okriora looking at her with that emotionless stare, and it infuriated the woman to no end. I see. And nothing I say could change your mind. Said Okriora seeing the woman just shake her head no to his question. Nothing, said Conan simply. It will be quick then. I will give you that much, said Okriora seeing the woman nod her head in understanding. I am ready, said Conan knowing this would be her end, and soon, only darkness filled her vision when she hit the ground. With Zetsu, the plant like Missing Din was always nervous, its two sides speaking indifferently than a normal person, as the white side would say one thing, and the dark side would speak of something else in a different voice. The man was two members in one, as Payne had seen fit name him, and became the Akatsuki's key spy throughout the elemental countries, due to his means of traveling to different locations throughout the world. You sense it too, said the white Zetsu nervously. Of course, I do Baka. He's here. We should warn the others, said the black Setsu, as he knew the organization's survival was paramount to warning the others of Okriora's arrival, and to properly defend themselves. You're too late, said Okriora appearing behind the missing Nin, and slashed his head clean off with his son Pakto. Without another word, Okriora vanished via Sunido, and went to hunt down the other two remaining members. With pain. Nagato, the real Nagato, also known throughout the elemental countries as Pain, sat on his throne, and frowned with closed eyes, when he sensed Setsu's life force come to a very abrupt end. Madara was still on the opposite side of the base, and the Rinnegan user knew he would have known, if the Ichiha had suddenly decided to just kill the key spy for the Akatsuki organization. Something is wrong. Something is very wrong, said Pain as he tried to sense Conan, but found himself unable to, and that made him even more worried. She was his protector. His shield. 
his last line of defense to prevent anyone from getting near him. You have no idea, said Okriora appearing from the shadows of the dark room, and stared at the man behind the bodies. So, you've come to kill me like the others. You would challenge a god, said Pain, as he summoned all of his six paths, and they were ready to fight for their master. You are no god, said Okriora before covering the room in thick spiritual pressure just to prove his point. This won't stop me said Pain, as he tried to move his six paths, but found all of them were unresponsive, and kept trying to fight this intense feeling of dread. I already have. Once I kill you, Ichiha Madara will soon follow, and then everyone else, that deserves to die will in fact, die, said Okriora before destroying the six paths with ease, and then pointed a single finger at the extremely skinny man. I am a god, said Pain defiantly at Okriora. Hardly. You don't even classify as a demigod, or even a fraction of a god. Sero, said Okriora, as he destroyed the man into nothing, and walked away. Only to encounter the form of Ichiha Mater, who had removed his swirling mask, and now donned his classic blood-red samurai armor he wore when fighting the Shodayume. So the Kyubi Jinchuriki graces me with his presence and in his new form, said Madara drawing his sword, while Okriora just looked at him with a bored expression. I'm not him anymore. You can thank Kanoha for that, said Okriora seeing Madara give him an amused smile. Yes I heard. The way you are coming after the Akatsuki is still a mystery to me. You should be a member, and help us achieve our goal, said Madara while Okriora shook his head no when the man said, our goal he really meant my goal. You assume I hate only Kanoha much less know what it means to hate. I have long since lost my emotions and become empty inside. Kanoha, Iwa, the Akatsuki, and of course you have made people suffer for personal ambition. Are you curious to know what it is that all three have in common? Said Okriora seeing Madara still looking amused. Though, by all means Okriora-san, please tell me, and reveal the truth, said Madara in an almost mocking manner. You are all spineless trash. Cowards at the lowest level for fearing something so trivial as death and judgment, said Okriora seeing Madara smile leave him, and turn into a scowl. You know nothing boy, said Madara seeing Okriora raise an eyebrow at him. I know enough. I know you fought the Shodayume Hokage for the right to be ruler of the village and was defeated in battle. I know you couldn't stand the shame of losing to him, and decided that being Hokage wasn't enough. You wanted more. However, the villages were all strong, and powerful to easily oppose you. So you decided to wait. You let the hand of time be your weapon, striking in key places to weak each shinobi village, but the plan set in motion, hid an obstacle in the form of the Yuan Daime Hokage himself. I knew that the man could ruin everything, said Okriora seeing Madara's eyes narrow. You know quite of information for someone who shouldn't, said Madara accusingly at the iron car. Kayubi told me some things went together. As for the rest, you were quite the blabbermouth to my parents, while I was Uzumaki Naruto, and didn't know when to stop your senseless gloating. The Kayubi himself told me of your humiliating defeat at the hands of the Shodayume Hokage, and he even laughed about it when we had conversations together. You are such a pathetic creature mother. The word trash doesn't even define you, said Okriora seeing the man become infuriated at his words. You dare disrespect me? You should know your place sport. I have lived for well over a hundred years, and I have more power in my finger than you do in your entire body said Madara before he found himself hitting the floor from the spiritual pressure Okriora had released upon him, and unlike last time, this was several times stronger. You mean this power? The same kind of power that has you at my mercy? I have lived far longer as Okriora's Shifer, than you have as Ichiha Madara. You see, Waco Mundo is different in terms of time and space when compared to this world of the living. While it has been roughly three years since the death of Uzumaki Naruto, several hundred if not over thousand years have passed in that place. I called home since my creation is a hollow of Vasto Lorde status, before becoming an Aran Kar, and then an Espada in Aizen Sama's army. Said Okriora before increasing the pressure more to prove his point, and saw the Ichiha was practically suffocating under such power. The ceiling. It's like I'm swimming, no. I'm drowning in water, but it feels thicker, and more dense than anything I've ever felt before. I can't, I can't teleport. Thought Madara while trying to use his eyes ability, but found himself unable to, and found himself at the ever emotionless looking Aran Kar's mercy. An oxymoron if you've ever heard one. Itachi also made the same mistake in underestimating me, and paid the price of having his very soul devoured in the process when using his Sharingan. When that happened, I was able to see his memories, but I focused mostly on the ones of you, and the key part played in helping him kill the Chiha clan. Itachi only went along with your little plan, knowing he would not live to see it happen, and believed that the violence would end one way or another, regardless of him being in this world to witness the event. Said Okriora before increasing the pressure on Madara, so the man felt more weight on his body. And you think your actions and plans will bring peace? Fool. Jinchuriki will always be hated, wars will always be waged, and the cruelty the people of the world bring to it will never die, said Madara seeing Okriora surprisingly agree with him. I know. I am not blind, or ignorant of that simple fact. But the world does need to slow down, catch its breath, to sit down in order to see clearly. 
I will make that happen, said Okriora before extending his hand, cutting his palm with his thumb, and formed the necessary attack to remove the Akatsuki off the map for good. The strange energy. It's the exact same kind of energy I sensed in Rice Country after it destroyed everything. Thought Madara trying to get free, but was still unable to use his teleportation ability, and only now truly understood the meaning of despair. Consider yourself lucky, if not honored to see this high level attack up so up close, and to die from it Ichiha Madara. Though the Leaf and Iowa will face a far worse version of this than you could possibly imagine. Grand Race Zero. Settle Kriora before firing his attack at the oldest Ichiha in the world. And ending him along with all of Ame in the process. It's ironic. The rain has finally stopped. Is that because of the attack he used? Or was it because the source of the rain was the Akatsuki like it was Hanzo? Thought Conan, as she had been watching on hands and knees before sensing Okriora appear instantly behind her. Do you know why I spared you? Said Okriora, as he put a firm hand on the woman's shoulder and saw her look back at him. No? I don't know, and I wish you had killed me, said Conan seeing the man easily lift her up off the ground. I spared you because out of all the Akatsuki members, you were the only one worthy of living. Your motives were purer than everyone else within the organization. Even when offered the chance to leave, you turned it down out of principle and integrity that kept it alive. The others did not. You looked at despair and was not afraid to meet your end at my hands, said Okriora seeing Conan was crying horribly now knowing everything this place had been, was lost to her. And what will happen to me now? Am I your prisoner? A slave? Said Conan seeing Okriora shake his head no. I do not keep prisoners or slaves. Go to Mist. They could use your help. They know what it means to suffer and could use your experience and how to endure it. They will grow stronger with your help, said Okriora seeing Conan look surprised by this. And the Mizukage will just let me in. Does she know I was a member of the Akatsuki, said Conan seeing the R incarnate's head. I have already told the Mizukage to expect you, said Okriora before opening the Garganta and walked into it. Don't expect me to thank you for this. Even if what you did is for the best, I can't just accept what has happened, said Conan to see Okriora look back at her for a second, while the Garganta was closing. I don't expect you to thank me for this. What I expect is for you to survive, endure, and grow stronger from it, said Okriora before vanishing from sight. Hokage's office. Some time later. Damn that baka, said Sanade, as she slammed her fist on the desk after reading the report of Ame's destruction, and the destruction was eerily similar to how Rice Country met its own end. She had been busy trying to prepare a possibly strategy aimed at fighting Okriora and his allies, while sharing information with Iwa on how to defeat the Aran Car. The planning was not showing much of any promise, and Iwa's temper was running short to a degree that it could rival the Hokage zone. Some things never change you old hag, said Okriora appearing via Garganta, while seeing the Hokage rise from her chair ready to fight. Anu, said Tsunade before her guards appeared and surrounded the Aran car. Don't bother. I'm not here to fight, and we both know the loss of so many of your shinobi in such a short time will increase if they try here, said Okriora seeing one Anbu take one half step forward. Then why are you here? said an Anbu from the Yamanaka clan. To see something for myself. I've heard rumors of the Hokage's sanity being put into question. For once, the rumors were correct, said Okriora with a very small hint of amusement. How dare you? Kill him. Said Tsunade before the intense spiritual pressure Okriora was known to unleash covered the room, and made them all sink to the ground. Only this time, it was much thicker like when he had unleashed it on Ichiha Madara, and stared at the downed Hokage. Know this Hokage of the Leaf. The time of the village's judgment is almost upon you. Do not bother sending people out of the village for they will not get far. Do not try to beg for mercy from me, for I will show none, just as the village did to Uzumaki Naruto. You will know fear, pain, and above all things before you end, despair, said Okriora before he cut off the pressure, and entered the Garganta with the dimensional rift closed around him. Sanade sama Are you all, right, said Shizune running into the office, after she had sensed what had happened in the room, but the spiritual pressure kept everyone in the tower completely immobilized, and unable to do anything. I'm fine. Get out. Everyone get out. Now, said Tsunade, as she felt her wounded pride aching, and her temper flaring. Somewhere in the village, Jiraiya shivered with his senses telling him to stay the hell away from Tsunade, and decided to hide someplace safe. The center of the earth sounded nice this time of year. Kuratsuchi, the new Sichikage of Iwa frowned at the report in front of her, as a scout had come running back to the village, and looked deathly afraid. From what the shinobi had reported, it was good reason, as Taki had fallen recently to outside forces. And not just any outside forces either. No. The village was destroyed by the allied forces of one Okriora Schiffer, the seven-tailed Jinchuriki Fu, who was once the guardian of the village, and soon of forces led by Sabaku no Tamari. Most of the village itself was kept intact, as it was clear the resources around Taki alone could bring about a new form of prosperity to Suno with a freshwater source, and the value it presented to wind country, given how most of it was desert. 
a large supply of water that seemed to never end was worthy more to Suna than gold, and Okriora had agreed to let Taki be annexed into wind, since such resources would only benefit them in the future. That was three days ago. First, highly skilled leaf shinobi meet their end, or Chimuru, rice country, then the Akatsuki organization is destroyed, Amei soon after, and now the village of Taki itself is lost. The hidden village of Kumo, Mist, and Suno are allied together to remove Iwa along with the leaf for our past transgressions. Spring country has fallen in with them, as has wave country, and the majority of their firepower are the Jinchuriki themselves. Even then, they are nothing when compared to Okriora's Shifer himself, as he could easily kill them all without batting an eyelash, and had proven was possible when killing the late Saw and Dayumate Sichikage right in front of her. All for the sake of those damn Jinchuriki Han and Rashi. Kurosuchi knew it was in part to Okriora's past life in being the Kayubi's final Jinchuriki, but it was hardly fair to the rest of the elemental countries that they should suffer when things like this have been going on for years. And no one had complained. Okay maybe that wasn't true, as people had complained in the past, but they were in the minority, or were the Jinchuriki before measures had been taken to silence those voices. Funny how karma had turned things around, so the shoe was on the other foot. Afraid, said Okriora, as he appeared in front of the woman, and scaring her almost out of the Kage chair she sat on. Guards, said Kurtsuchi with the Anbu arriving moments later with weapons strong. Do all arrogant Kages in power, send their shinobi to their death so soon. And I thought the Hokage in Leaf, was the only one losing her mind, said Okriora seeing the female Tsuchikage quickly raised her hand to stop the Anbu from advancing. Why are you here, said Kurtsuchi knowing there was a reason for the man being in her office and wanted to hear it. I wanted to know if you and I were interested in surrendering, said Okriora seeing the Anbu tense and Kurtsuchi doing the same. Never. Every single Iwa shinobi and citizen will fight you, and your allies to the last person capable of fighting, said Kurosuchi seeing Okriora not in understanding. He expected as much from her. Can't say I didn't try. Also, just so you know, Suna and Kumo are outside your walls on one side of the village, said Okriora, as the Garganta appeared behind him, and several other smaller ones acting like TVs, open to reveal the troops to the Tsuchikage. What? said Kurosuchi in surprise. Yes. They are attacking from one side, and I am attacking from the other, said Okriora before he entered the Garganta and closed with the scenes he showed with them. Mobilize all our forces. Prepare to defend Iwa, said Kurosuchi. But even as she spoke those words, explosions rocked the village, and soon the sound of fighting could be heard outside the tower. With the growing feeling of dread becoming even larger in the deepest regions of her gut, knowing this village had possibly seen its last sunrise. With Alquior, the Iron Car looked down at Iwa, seeing the people rushing to defend their homes from the enemies outside the walls, and some even screaming in fear, when they looked up to see him staring back down. Some called him the Angel of Death. Some called him the God of Judgment. He was neither. Alquior's Schiffer was just a man. A man that could kill with the strength that made the tailed beasts look like pansies, but a man nonetheless, and one with the purpose of removing one of the last remaining problems the elemental countries has at the moment. Slowly, Alquior unsheathed his saw in Pacto, holding it lazily while staring at the people below, as his allies fought Iwa, and he just continued to stare down at them, while thoughts ran through his head. Did he really want to do this? To activate his Resurrection form for the first time, since he became alive. To show everyone his terrifying transformation, that would make children cry, women scream, and men falls to their knees in despair. Looking back on his life, as well as what Han and Rashi told him about their own well-being Jinchuriki absolutely. Enclosed with Sai Lago, said Okriora before he transformed in a blast of black with green outlined energy into his Resurrection form with large bat-like wings. Below, people looked up in horror at seeing what Okriora's Schiffer had become, as his coat covered him from his neck on down past his feet, his hollow mask moved from one side of his face to becoming a center helmet piece with horns in the center, and his hair was now longer with a wild appearance behind it. His eyes now had black streaks, where it looked like he had been crying, and his fingernails lengthened to become almost like claws. In short, Okriora's Schiffer looked like the Angel of Death, and he had his sights set on living up to that title, by making an example out of Iwa. I'm glad he's on our side, said Baki, as he saw Okriora in his Resurrection form, and would be lying if he said the Aran car above didn't make him want to wet himself. No shit. I'd rather face my brother back in his psychotic days, than him and that staying something, said Konkuro, as he saw Okriora's Schiffer descend down upon his section of the village, and wondered if the Aran car would ever become an enemy of Suna in the future. He hoped not. Many of Iwa's shinobi converged on Okriora's position, throwing weapons, jutsus, and everything except the kitchen sink at him. It was clear they felt that with his death, the man's allies would retreat knowing they had killed their strongest powerhouse, and make them all think twice about fighting Iwa. Sadly, if they thought Okriora was incredibly strong before, then they found themselves practically fighting something out of Kami's own nightmares, and were soon decimated like flies. 
A Chidok Ryuor landed caused his enemies to explode almost immediately on contact, as he ignored the Jutsus and weapons thrown at him, while focusing on close combat with his four limbs to destroy them all. They tried to bury him deep in the ground, hit him with spikes made of jagged edged rock, and drop boulders on the iron car's physical form, in the hopes it would turn him into a blood smear. Sunido solved the burying problem, the jagged rock spikes broke on contact with his body, and the boulders shattered on contact with his form. To further increase their despair, Alkuyori used his javelin generation attack on them, as he speared his enemies into building walls around him, and the screams of pain from all his various victims echoing throughout the village. It wasn't long before the new female Tsuchikage appeared and was ready to fight him for Iwa's survival. So you've come to die I see, said Alkuyori seeing Kurosuchi with a sword at the ready to use. I've come to kill you said Kurtsuchi before charging forward, thrusting her blade at him with the intent of it piercing through his skull, but the iron car merely caught the tip of the weapon with his fingers, and held it there without even blinking. That will prove difficult for you, said Okriora before flicking the sword away and then dodging the next attempt that was soon followed by several more. Until finally, Okriora has enough of the woman's attempts, and shattered the sword with the back of his hand before grabbing the woman by the throat. He lifted the woman up into the air, giving her an almost appraising look, as if pondering over the very idea of letting the woman live, and seek a life of solitude away from the shinobi lifestyle would be possible for her. That idea left when Kurosuchi tried to stab him in the face with kunai. More accurately, she tried to stab him in one of his eyes, which under normal circumstance would have worked, but Okriora's shiffer was not normal, and thus the rules of metal piercing soft flesh did not apply. The kunai itself broke on impact with Okriora frowning at the Kagi for being so stupid and lashing out against someone holding her very life in his hands. But, the iron car reminded himself that this woman was someone who fought to the bitter end and not give up until death took her. But the flick of his wrist and snap of her neck it did. The rest of the fighting had ended soon after with the death of Iwa's Tsuchikage, as the people surrendered soon after word spread of the woman's death and the spoils of the village were divided up between them evenly. Skulls, resources, clans, territory, and everything else was divided carefully under Alkriora eyes, since both villages helping him in this attack deserved a fair share of the spoils. After the village was emptied, Alkriora in his Rhyseraxion form went into the air, and pointed his right index finger at the empty place, with his power becoming extremely thick. Normally the Iron Car wouldn't use this kind of Sero attack, but given the fact the Leaf and the Hokage were no doubt witnessing this event in their own way, a statement of what was to come demanded such a thing be done. Okay? What's he doing, and I why feel like crapping my pants, said Konkuro watching from a safe distance with everyone else. Sero Skurs, said Okriora before firing his Sero that shot out of his finger with a black colored beam with a thin green outline being unleashed on the empty village. Akami, said Baki, as he was in shock at seeing the destruction Okriora had caused to what was one Saiwa. Okay. I just crapped my pants, said Konkuro before discreetly leaving the shinobi army, to clean himself away from eyes that could use it as blackmail against him. Quite a few shinobi did the same. Kanoha. Days later. Iwa was destroyed. That fast. Impossible. Said Sanade, as she had allied with Iwa in order to combat Alkriora, and his allies seemingly getting stronger by the second. Yeah. The guy apparently transformed, grew wings, bone-like helmet with horns, and after it was all over, he blew the entire village away with a single attack. He whispered it, but the name of the attack was Sarah Oscurs from what I have been told, and much worse than what he unleashed on Rice Country, said Jurea seeing Sanade becoming more fearful at that news. We have to evacuate as many as we can from the leaf. Hide them in a secret location and prepare them with a means to one day take that damn brat down, said Sanade, as she wasn't about to have the leaf meet the same death as Iwa, and not have some kind of plan set in motion to kill Alkrior, before rebuilding the leaf. Not possible. It's out on what we've done to Naruto. No one wants anything to do with us. None of the elemental countries will let anyone from Fire Country cross over into their territory, and the Fire Daimyo has basically decreed we're banned from relocating anyone out of the village. Even I'm banned from leaving Fire Country or the Leaf for that matter, said Jiraiya, while seeing Sanade slam her fist into the desk in anger. So we're supposed to die here? To just be exterminated? Like vermin? said Sanade, as she glared at Jiraiya, and he just shrugged. What did you expect the people in the elemental countries currently in power of their own territories Sanade? They heard what we did to Naruto. The people here each have had enough of people like the ones in Taki, Iwa, and Leaf abusing Jinchuriki. Suna has long since abandoned the policy after Guard became Kazukage and Kumo changed things before that. What did you expect would happen when Naruto died? That those that cared about him would let us even get away with it, said Jiraiya seeing Sanade glare at him. I don't care what those fools think. They are all the same. They care, are compassionate, and act like naive fools, thinking that they know better than people like me. I'm a Senju, I'm a Sanin, a Shinobi, and I'm the Hokage of Kanoha like my grandfather before me. I don't give a damn what those insignificant Bakas think of Naruto. 
I will not be judged by such weak morons, said Sanade seeing Jirei run a hand through his long hair. You may be Hokage of Kanoha for the moment Sanade, but you know damn well those people who cared about Naruto are not weak, and they certainly aren't morons. If we were true to the Sandayume and Yuandayume's ways we'd realize that the weak morons are in fact us, said Jureya seeing Sanade had an almost insane look in her eyes. Almost insane look. How dare you call me weak? Get out. Get out. The next time I see you, it better be with Alkuyora's Schiffer's hat in your hands, or I'll have your heart in mine, said Sanade, as she saw Jureya flinch knowing he had pissed her off to the very brink, and wisely left the room. This is bad Shizune. I know what you mean. It seems with each passing day, she gets worse, and I don't know how to handle it, said Jureya seeing Shizune not in agreement. I know. Truth be told, I wanted to leave Kanoha after Naruto-kun died, but my heart just wasn't in it, and I knew Sanade-sama would see it as a betrayal to her. She does not take such things lightly, said Shizune knowing she had nowhere to go, and fleeing from the leaf would have been impossible. Sanade would have seen to that. You can tell that to Okuyori when he gets here. Though don't hold your breath if he puts a hole in your chest like he did to most of his enemies, said Jureya seeing Shizune shiver at that fact. Kanoha front gates. I hate guard duty. Now more than ever, said one Chunin, who was feeling nervous for obvious reasons, and his partner was the same way. Same here. That Okuyori shiver guy could come out of nowhere and kill us without so much as blinking, said the second leaf Chunin. Shut up. You'll jinx our shift, said the first leaf Chunin, before seeing someone was walking towards them, and went pale when they both saw who it was. Oh shit, said the second leaf Shunin before the two hit the alarm and closed the gates to deny access. I told you not to jinx it, said the first leaf Shunin. Hey, fuck you, said the second leaf Shunin before Ambu arrived, and they explained the situation. However, no sooner had the Ambu been told of the situation did the large doors become dented from the blow landed on them by Alcriora's Schiffer, and then go flying open on the second hit. The Aran car began walking casually into the leaf village, hands in his pockets, and not intimidated in the slightest by the leaf shinobi swarming around him. I thank you for coming to me. I never liked hunting for trash. There is just no appeal to it, said Okuyora before using Sunido to appear in the middle of the swarm, and easily destroyed them with few well-placed blows from his kicks he unleashed. Not once using his hands. Okuyora Shiffer, said Sumi appearing with Hana, Kiba, and several others of her clan. Ah, the Inuzuka clan. How are you? Still doing your traditional fox hunts you enter in every year. I imagine it's not as fun anymore when the fox in question isn't an six-year-old child just wanting something to eat, said Okuyora seeing Sume tense along with the other members of the clan. How do you remember that? Inoichi removed that from your mind, said Sume seeing Okuyora raise an eyebrow or before raising his right hand to one of his eyes. Before removing it much to their surprise. I never forgot. I remember everything. From my time as Uzumaki Naruto to what I am now. Do you want to see those memories? You and everyone around you needs to know my pain. Everyone needs to see things from point of view, said Okuyora before his eye dispersed into particles, and covered the air around him with the people soon screaming out in pain at seeing the Aran car's memories. Memories of his life as Uzumaki Naruto, seeing his abuse, his struggles, the hate, and the fact Ichiha Sasuke was not the saint they thought him to be. They saw the memories of Okuyora's Shiffer, his service to Sosuke Aizen, the killing of human beings, and every single battle the Aran car fought. Oh Kami. Such pain. Such horror. Did we really do that to him? My mother, my clan, and the entire village. Thought Hana, as she had never joined in those hunts, but that didn't mean she was guilty by association, and saw those large green eyes were so empty inside. You really think that pathetic piece of trash could remove my memories? When I was Uzumaki Naruto, the Kyubi made sure all my memories were duplicated in the event such a thing happened, and to ensure I never forgot the abuse of the leaf. I wanted to prove to everyone that they were wrong, but they couldn't stand the truth and would rather live a lie to lessen their guilt, said Okuyora seeing Hana now shaking her head, crying, and trying to get the images out of her mind. I can't believe. You always told me he was a monster, but not once, not once did he lash out, and yet you still denounced him. Naruto wasn't the monster you said he was mother. You are, said Hana pointing at her own mother and walked backwards into a wall. I know. I know I was. We were. However, it doesn't give him the right to do this now, and get his revenge, said Sume seeing Okuyora tilt his head to the side. You're such a hypocrite. Do you know the reason, why your father ran away from your clan in Yuzuka Hana? He ran because your mother threatened to kill him, if he was ever seen defending me from mobs like the one Uzumaki Naruto was saved from when he was 7 years old, and denying her own revenge for the loss of her aunt during the Kyubi's attack, said Okuyora seeing Hana glaring now at her mother. I want nothing to do with you. I renounce myself from the Inuzuka clan said Hana before running off with Kiba calling back to her. Hana, you turned her against the clan. Like you did with Hinata against Kanoha. Said Kiba seeing Okuyora shake his head and close his eyes. You have all done that yourself. 
I merely showed her the truth behind the actions of this village. It's not my fault her family is filled with arrogant trash, said Okuyor, before feeling the presence in Narashikaku's shadow, trying to hold him in place and constrict his throat. You talk too much boy, said Narashikaku, while trying to choke the iron car with his shadow strangulation jutsu, but Okuyor wasn't budging, and showed no signs of being in pain. Maybe. Did you enjoy my past memories too, said Okuyor before sensing Yamanaka and Oichi to his right. Hardly. I don't care what they show. Your time is over said Inoichi before using his mind shatter jutsu to attack the iron car, but all it did was tilt the man's head to a slight fraction, and the former Espada turned his head to look at the shocked blonde. Surprise! You couldn't kill me with that when I was Uzumaki Naruto. What makes you think you can kill me with that jutsu now? Said Okuyor seeing the man snarl at him, before going for another jutsu, but froze when the iron car pointed a finger at him, and saw Shikaku struggling to hold him back. I can't stop him said Shikaku seeing Choza expand his arms and fists to large sizes before bringing both limbs down on Okuyor. They caught them with one hand like they were nothing. You never could from this start. Seru, said Okuyor, as he fired the beam of energy at Inoichi, and put a hole right through his chest where the heart would have been. Inoichi, said Choza before crying out in pain at the sudden strike from Okuyor, and knocking them away while breaking them in the process. Full, said Okuyor before turning to face Shikaku, who had retracted his shadow, and was taking several steps back. I guess this is checkmate, said Shikaku seeing Okuyor turn his right hand into a fist. For you? Yes. Bullet, said Okuyor before firing his attack at Shikaku, and continued walking away without even looking back. Making his way to the center of the village, Okuyor Shifer found himself surrounded on all sides by shinobi of every rank, even the Ichiha was there, and of course Tsunade herself leading them with Jurei right beside her. Shizune wasn't with them, but the man sensed she was in the hospital, and filled with regret for the actions of her teacher. You're going to die brat. And this time you're going to stay dead. Said Tsunade seeing Okuyora look from her to Jureya to the remaining rookies. Did you tell her yet Jureya? Said Okuyora ignoring Tsunade and focusing on the toad son in in front of him. Tell me what? Said Tsunade looking from the iron car to Jureya. Well the toad son in became nervous. Your little ambush party in wave country, when the alliance between Kumo and Mist was being made, didn't work due to my ability to sense them. I was informed of the plot well in advance by the right Kage, and he got his information from one source by the name of Jiraiya the Toad Sanin, said Okuyor, seeing Tsunade glaring at him, and clearly not believing his words. Liar, said Tsunade seeing Okuyor shrug slightly like it was immaterial to him. Believe what you want old hag, but I never lie, and find that the truth is the most painful weapon of all to use against you. Tell her Irosenin. Tell her how you silently leaked out that information in order to bribe me for the forgiveness you desire and will never be given, said Okuyora seeing Jureya looking nervous while Tsunade turned her head in his direction. Alright. I admit it. I told him because I want his forgiveness Tsunade and I'm not the only one. Several Jonin, Chunin, and the remaining rookies are guilt-ridden over what we did to Uzumaki Naruto in the past, said Jureya, as his voice was filled with regret, and saw Okuyora draw his son Pakto. I'll kill you later. Right now, I want this thing killed right now said Tsunade pointing at the iron car. You do not regret hurting me when I was Uzumaki Naruto. You got son. At all? Said Okuyora seeing the woman spit on the ground in front of her. My only regret is not coming back to Kanoha sooner to kill you myself, when you were still a damn baby, said Tsunade while Jureya just winced. Oh yeah Tsunade. Like that's not going to make the situation worse, thought Jureya seeing Okuyora's eyes narrow slightly. I see. Search your hearts for what you all value the most. For I have come to take them from you and in every form such valuables could take shape. Enclose Mursai Lago. Said Okuyor before he transformed into his Resurrection form. Oh Kami. Thought Jureya sensing the intense power behind the transformation, and yet since the man was just getting started. Consider this an honor. Not even I was saw my second transformation, said Okuyor seeing everyone was shaking in fear at the sight of him. But it wasn't enough. Not nearly enough. You're bluffing. You couldn't possibly become even stronger than you already are, said Sasuke in disbelief at the iron car's words. You should at least know one thing about me by now Chiha Sasuke. I don't bluff. Now you will feel true despair upon witnessing my second form and see what only a handful in life have ever witnessed. Resurrection. Segunda Etapa. Settle Krior before he was once again consumed in black energy with a green outline, which after vanishing seconds later had revealed the iron car's terrifying form and the thickness of his already intense spiritual pressure, making his last statement of them feeling true despair becoming real when everyone around the former Espada fell to their knees. He's a monster, thought Tsunade, as Okuyora Shifer walked towards her, and gripped the woman by the throat, before lifting her off the ground to look the woman dead in the eyes. Your disgrace to your family sent you Tsunade. You betrayed so many people, and even now do not regret it in the slightest. 
even though some of the people in the leaf wish to redeem themselves for their past sins, I will not let them, as they are too little too late, and have no reason to grant any of you mercy. Several Kriora seeing Ichiha Sasuke glaring at him hatefully, while trying to fight the despair the Aran Kar's spiritual pressure had created. And how exactly are you going to kill all of us, said Sasuke trying to stand up, but fell back down to his knees, and could almost hear the grunt of annoyance from Okriora at his question. Simple. I'm going to devour your souls. You will not exist anymore after today. Almost every single person in this village will have their souls sucked out and be digested within my body, said Okriora seeing several people struggling to rise, but were failing to do so, and saw fearful realization grip his former godmother's heart. Naruto I'm sorry. Don't do this. Show, show mercy, said Sanade, seeing Okriora just blink once when looking at her. Naruto, I am not that human boy. I am not the naive child this village spent most of his childhood life making miserable for something that wasn't his fault. In your last breath, you say that you are sorry, but I know it is lie, and a pathetic one at that. As for mercy, there is no mercy in me to give people like you. I am despair in its purest form that you all had in creating through the boy's death. Now you will die too, only in the worst way possible, and without a means to see what lies beyond on the other side. Gonzi. Said Okriora, as he proceeded to suck the souls out of everyone around him, and devour them into his body. With his task done, Okriora then shot a lance at Del Relampago into the air to signal Kumo, and missed waiting not far from the village to invade Kanoha. The leaf would not survive this invasion. A blog. Several years later. Okriora smiled at his wife Inada, as she held their beautiful baby girl in her arms, and saw the giggling child smile up at him. Yes Okriora had finally learned what it meant to have emotions after so long with the help of Hinata, Fu, Killer B, Gar, and the people in Wave Country he came to visit every so often. After the fall belief, the remains of it were divided evenly among Kumo, and Mist, with the latter of the two acquiring more in terms of clans to bulk up their shinobi forces. The village's jutsus, money, and whatever couldn't be nailed down, was taken by the combined allied army once again under Okriora's supervision. After the place was completely emptied out, the Aran car quickly obliterated the entire village, using his Sarrow as scurs with the blast destroying everything within Kanoha above and below, with the secret root base, along with all its members also wiped out too. Of course, Danzo had tried to use his Sharingan eyes mixed with the Shodarime's bloodline in his hidden arm to escape, but Okriora wouldn't let him, and removed the man after the Aran car threw him into the Garganta. As for Kumo, they acquired the remnants of the Hyuga clan on the branch family side, as most of the main family was killed with the exception of Hinata's sister Hanabi, who was currently in mist with Kanahamaru, after they married to rebuild the Hyuga clan there, and start things over with a fresh start. Shizune had surrendered to Okriora, as she lay before him at his mercy before being taken to mist, but in the past few years since being there had several apprentices, who had gone out into the world, and used their medical skills to help others in need. What do we name her Okriora-kun? said Hinata, as she held their baby girl in her arms, and the child filled with so much love. Her name will be, Arihame, said Okriora, as he gently brushed his finger against the newly named girl's cheek, and the child loved it. After that girl, the one, who didn't fear you in the end, said Hinata, as she saw him nod, and knew the girl had started the process for Okriyor, to understand the human heart. Yes. How is Anko doing? I understand her mood has been less than pleasant since she began showing in her pregnancy, said Okriyor seeing Hinata's smile, knowing that the man before her had a hand in that. Along with Fu's too. Anko's doing okay given the circumstance. She still says it's going to be a boy, and has threatened to cause you physical harm if told otherwise, said Hinata knowing the woman was complaining each day about looking like a beached whale. And Fu is acting in a similar fashion to only she's saying twins, said Okriora, while trying to think up names for his offspring. How's Han doing these days? I heard from Aum in her letter she's pregnant and that the man is the father, said Hinata seeing Okriora not in agreement. He is. The man loves his wife and child to death. Only a fool would come after him now, said Okriora smiling more at his daughter falling asleep. I still can't believe Rashi fell in love with the Mizukage. He's even starting his own clan with her, Conan, and just recently Shizune asked to be a part of it, said Hinata seeing the man nod. They trusted me in bringing them the happiness they desired, and I delivered on it like I promised, said Okriora seeing Hinata nod in agreement. That you did Okriora kun. That you did, said Hinata smiling at her husband, while looking at the man's chest, where his hollow hole had been. The hole wasn't there anymore. Okriora Schiffer now knew what it was like to have a heart. Finn. Omaki number one. How my guy and Rock Lee died. Yash. We must stop Okriora san from achieving victory over the Leaf Guy Sensei, said Lee, with Guy nodding his head vigorously in agreement. Yes, Lee, we must. If I don't, I shall run 1000 laps around Kanoha well upside down, and if I can't do that, then I'll balance myself on a giant cube of ice using only my tongue, said Guy, with Lee writing his words down. And I will do the same. 
If I can't, then I will destroy 1000 training posts with a single strike of my fist. And if I can't do that then I'll clean out the Inizuka kennels with a single feather plucked from a chicken, said Lee. Well guy just gushed at his attitude. Lee. Bai sensei. Lee. Bai sensei. And on cue was the genjutsu with the sunrise and wave beach while they hug. So, said Okrira, as his blast disintegrated them both, and the iron car just kept on walking. That was the one genjutsu that could have possibly defeated all Kriora and they blow it. Energetic Bakas, thought Kami shaking his head, while seeing the pile of paperwork being caused by the iron car's path of destruction before weeping. All the power in the universe and he had to do something stupid by creating paperwork. And Omake, Omake number 2. Entering the Soul Society. Okriora had lived a long-lasting life with his wives and his children until at last he died of old age. Hinata, Anko, and Fu had all died soon after with their children living happily in Kumo raising their children. As Okriora along with the others reached the gate to enter Soul Society, the doors opened, and the former Espada stopped with white eyes at who was there to greet them. Welcome to Soul Society. I'm your guide Kurosaki Ichiko, said Ichiko, as he stared at Okriora's shiffer, and the pale-skinned man stared back. There was a lengthy silence. An echoing silence, that lingered for several more seconds after that. You? He yelled Alcriora and Ichigo at the same time while pointing a finger at each other. Before Ichigo fainted while Alcriora recovered with a smirk. I win again Kurosaki Ichigo, said Alcriora before stepping over Ichigo and motioning the others to follow him in. Never bet against a man who has the devil's luck in them twice over. Endomake. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video. Like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.